Today is one of the mall's seasonal craft fairs. The mall is full of vendors from all over the state. Shoppers browse the many stands. The building feels quite full. The end result is quite beautiful. I'll show you what the end result looks like. This is how a loon ends up. It is during these rare seasonal events that you will get to see what this mall used to look like on a weekly basis. It wasn't that long ago that this very building was the centerpiece for shopping, entertainment, and community. Just off of exit 186 in central Maine, you will find the Bangor Mall. Sitting on 60 acres of newly refurbished concrete, nothing about the mall today would tell you of its rich history. The Bangor Mall has been the home to many fond memories of people near and far. How did Central Maine's primetime destination fall so far from grace? Today, we are going to dive into the history of the mall. We are going to relive the story of its past and we are going to find out if there is a future for the Bangor Mall. It's hard to say exactly when this story starts, but thanks to the James W. Sewell Company Aerial Photograph Collection, we know exactly what this area looked like before our story takes place. And it looked like this. In 1957, Hogan Road and Stillwater Avenue were just old town roads. You can see the Davis Dairy Farm and the cows sprinkled about. Other than this photo, this was the only other photo I could find while I certainly wish we had more, I think this photograph sums up everything we need to know. It would be only a few years later that this view would dramatically change. In 1965, we see the completion of I-95 and the interchange. This interstate would usher in a new era for central Maine. An eight-hour drive to Portland was now two, and at the other end of the freeway was the Great White North. The interstate created immense opportunity for commerce, and that consumerist potential would eventually manifest in 1976. The Bangor Mall was announced to the public. Billed as the largest shopping center in New England, it would cost upwards of $20 million. The cows had seen it all, and were the guests of honor at the groundbreaking ceremonies as the excavators went to work. Thus began the countdown. The mall would be finished in a year's time, and many Mainers would wait eagerly with anticipation. I spoke to Doug Bailey, a writer who was a journalism student at UMaine at the time, and wrote an excellent article about the mauling of downtown Bangor. I probably couldn't remember hardly a single article that I wrote for the main campus, except for some reason that one. There was no question it was going to occur. The downtown people just seem to like yeah well you know downtown's already corroding and so we have this now there was a lot of wishful thinking that people were going to come down from canada to go there downtown bangor in the 70s was in rough shape there was a growing hunger for retail infrastructure if enough people were making their way down to portland perhaps the bangor mall was inevitable many parts of the state far away from southern maine now had something of their own a week before opening the mall managers stood together huddled as the anticipation built more and more. 
the largest shopping center in New England was soon to open. A shopping center built to accommodate 600,000 people in a town of 30,000. The excitement was felt well beyond the city of Bangor. Opening day would take place on October 5, 1978. Through acres of free parking, it was difficult to find a spot. There was to be a speech given by the state senator, an appearance by Miss Maine, and the U-Maine Orchestra would be there to usher in the guests with glorious music. Were you there on opening day? In... Yes. That's me in the photo. In the photo was story, I think that's me, like, taking a picture into a mirror. Well, gang, the wait was finally over. The manager of the mall at the time, Roy Daigle, was quoted saying, it was like the second coming of Christ or something. The second the mall opened, it was an iconic destination. Many would drive one to three hours just to go to the mall every weekend, every holiday. And as anticipated, many Canadians took the bus ride down from up north. And guys, we are talking busloads and busloads of Canadians ready to spend their hard-earned Canadian dollar. You see, back then, you didn't need to read the newspaper to know what was going on. As we enter the 1980s, we reach a sort of media void where it is hard to find photos online of a shopping mall everyone claims was busy all the time. I believe it is because the hype and buzz had faded and the Bangor Mall had just become the mall. We know many events and showcases and bustling times occurred within this building. While the photographs of this time are few and far between, the memories are as clear as day. That was what my father wanted for Christmas, was the cheese from Hickory Farms. So he would bring us, a couple days before Christmas, would bring us to the mall, and we would go in, get him his little block of cheese, little block of cheese, and then we'd have, oh, 10 more minutes, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour in the mall before he'd have had enough people and say it's time to go, and we'd go back home, put his block of cheese in the fridge, where it would last until Christmas morning when he'd eat his cheese. <laughs> the mall used to be where I go, went to see like Santa and shit growing up. And uh, I lived like an hour from here, so it was like a big city. It took like an hour to get here. And uh, now they used to put plants and shit everywhere. It used to be Macy's and now. I used to fucking be around the fucking mall. That's Sears, fucking JC Penny. That's true. You would just. Walk through it was a Starbucks. When you were a kid. You'd walk, pull into the mall, drive into the mall parking lot, and you'd just see the buses parked, and you knew it was gonna be crowded. Because the busloads of Canadians came down and, and were shopping too. So it just made it more fun. When I was a teenager, all I wanted to do was get dropped up at the mall with my friends, hang out at the arcade, have our pictures done in the photo booth. And definitely go to Fox Store. It was where popular girls got trendy clothes and um, accessories and kind of pop your collar and get a fuzzy sweater and look super cool. <laughs> Disney was more fun because 
they had a special little Beanie Baby type Disney character come out on Black Friday, limited edition. So I was normally the first person in line because <laughs> we'd get to the mall when it opened and I'd go sit outside Disney waiting for it to open so I could be sure to get the limited edition. <laughs> Do you have any of those plushies left? I worked at GameStop for a little bit, and the only foot traffic they got were people that were stealing. There was no GameStop back in the fucking there, day. It was like three, three years ago, though. No, there no, wasn't. There wasn't. I worked there. There's, there's a sign on the door that's a good Hey, Josh. This is also in the van. Hey. Yeah, there used to be this, um, I mean, the whole store is discontinued, but there was a toy store called KB Toys. There you go, dude. You know about yeah. GameStop, but you know about yeah, that? KB Toys is yeah. way better than GameStop. You know, yeah. I know, but it's like right next to okay, you. Right. I was there. I was there at the Garden of Eden. The 1980s were a great time to be an American shopping mall. But as we entered the 90s, there was a new age on the horizon. These were the last days before the internet's rapid growth, when we used to gather face to face, in person. Going into the 90s, the Bangor Mall was as busy as ever. An article in 1996 wrote of a mall with persistent shoppers, a frenzy that would take place every Christmas, and plenty of folks to take advantage of the sales after the holidays. Even back in 1996, there were shoppers like Buddy Mountain, who went to the mall after the big holiday rush. Noticing the markdown on certain items would be up to 70%, Buddy Mountain was certainly ahead of his time. After spending so much time at this mall throughout the years, I found myself in a trance-like state, transported to a much simpler time. I think it says a lot about a place when a man walks out of a bathroom stall and forgets to wash his hands because the memories of the Bangor Mall are that intoxicating. Perhaps, somewhere, deep inside all of us, there is a younger version of ourselves who refuses to grow up. A youngster who yearns so deeply to feel that wonder again. A kid who just wants to go to the mall. We don't have we don't have as many shared experiences that we used to have. Even going to movies now with the, uh, the streaming services and Netflix and everything. Even even watching movies, it's more like television. And shopping was a was a shared experience. So we'd all do it together on Saturday. We'd all go to the mall, you know. Um, yeah. There aren't too many things anymore that we do on a shared basis. We all we all do it at the same time. A pivotal event would take place in 1997. The mall would undergo renovation, and a fourth wing would be added. Gone were the earth tones and indoor plants. Patrons now walked on patterned marble. Skylights were opened further and the center gazebo, where Santa usually sat, was gone. The mall's renovation was remarked as beautiful and a breath of fresh air. And while I don't disagree with that statement, I couldn't help but notice the mall may have lost some of its original character. A lot of money had gone into renovating the space for us to once again feast our eyes. Tragically, as technology began to rapidly progress, our attention would not be focused on the environment around us. Times have changed so much that, that shopping is now, uh, you know, while we're talking here, I'm buying something online. <laughs> yeah. It's no secret that the rise of online shopping and increased retail infrastructure would spell doom for many malls across the country. Shoppers had convenience and many more options than before. The age of the American mall would begin to decline. Unlike its peers, the Bangor Mall would maintain relevance. People still frequented this mall, 
it remained what it had been since its onset. Its transformation would not be sudden. As the years rolled along, the cracks in the pavement began to show. century, there was a rumble on the horizon. In Maine, those unaccustomed to change were still breathing relatively easy. But all would change in June of 2003. The general manager of Porches, one of the mall's original anchor stores, took to the floor to announce that the beloved department store would be closing. closure of Porches was a devastating loss to the mall, the business itself left quite the mess on its way out. Dick's would fill that vacancy in the following year, but the mall would never be the same. As the years went by, stores began to move out of the Bangor Mall. The surrounding area of Stillwater Avenue, known as the Stillwater Strip, had been expanding for quite some time. Competition would raise the mall's bottom line, and rents would begin to rise, putting pressure on the businesses. The Canadians who had once bust down in large numbers were nowhere to be seen. We enter the mid-2010s. While still loved by the community, quotas were not being met to sustain the corporate businesses. Stores began to leave en masse. We lost Macy's in 2017, with Sears departing the next year, leaving Penny's as the only original anchor store. When the dust cleared, half the mall was empty and the food court was gone. This period of time would eventually be known as the Exodus. Is there any hope for Bangor Mall? No, I bet within the next years this will be a new building or something completely different. I think it's a place of community, but it's pretty foregone in my opinion. It's hard to say. Uh, there might be some hope, but I don't know. Things keep going the way they're going. Not much. But, but when we're talking about the Canadian thing, that had, even though they, that was built into the plan that will bring all these people Canada to our mall that had to have been a short term strategy because pretty soon somebody would build a, a mall in their neighborhood. While it is hard to tell what the future holds, what we can appreciate is the local businesses who currently inhabit the mall. It seems even when all hope is lost, there are some who understand what the mall represents. The local businesses tow the line of destiny, a fragile thread representing the hope worth fighting for and the ever looming demise. To summarize the information we've gone over today, this is the Bangor Mall iceberg. In this documentary, we have only scratched the surface. The iceberg is deeper than I and a lot of the public can imagine. One day, we will venture into the depths, but on this day, we are here to reminisce. So I was probably like eight, 10, 12 years old. Hot Topic was trying to come to the Bangor Mall. My mother and I, like, a group of other, like, religious, most likely homeschooled, like, Christian conservative moms, started a petition to not allow Hot Topic here because of the, like, witch's blood or, like, energy drinks or, like, pagan, whatever the... How did you feel about that? Oh, I didn't care. I was like... Yeah, let them count. For me, the mall was always the place of people who had. So like, they had everything that Walmart or Kmart had, but it was the brand names, it was a fancier version. So like, I would sit in Barnes and Nobles and read books that I couldn't afford to buy, and that they, the newer ones that they didn't have at the library yet. And that was like, what the mall was to me, was like, 
getting to look at everyone who had the money to shop there. I remember um, all of my suits for a debate came from Goodwill. And when I made the national tournament, mom, we were not doing well financially. And she was like, we're going to go to JCPenney and get you fitted for a suit. And like, that was like, I had almost made it. I had done something good enough to deserve a mall suit. And that was like prime for me, you know? Yeah. Hey. There's the old controller. Uh, there's no box to be found. It used to be right here. It's unplugged, unfortunately. Back in the day, we used to come here, and just fucking like loiter in zoomies, fuck around, bro, play skate. How often do you come here? Not often anymore. How much did you come here? Pretty, like, a good amount, dude. Like, nothing really better to do in Bangor, Maine. It was like a cool place to stop. There was like a lot of stores. Wisconsin has two stores. Yeah. One of them's like permanently going out of business. Really nice spot. I love it over there. What we used to do when we were in our youth, we would go there with a super glue and a quarter. We glue super glue the quarter to the ground, and then we would wait for people to come around and try to pick the quarter up, and then we would laugh at them, and then we'd just spend like afternoons doing that. You know what was great? American Eagle. Now that place, when you're like 17 years old, you go in there, you get a belt, and you just feel like you're like the king of the world. You know, all the cool kids shop there, and now you're a cool kid too. I have a lot of stories, but with I was standing next to this trash can, the only one that I can think about is the time that I was here, me and this group of girls I was friends with, we played hooky, so we were not at school. We were at the big mall. One of our girlfriends was having like a hard day. We were like, let's not go to school. Let's go to the mall. So here we were. And then we had gone and gotten a soft pretzel. We're walking up this way, and there was a woman holding a child above a trash can. And it was one of those moments where you're not really sure if what you're seeing is real life. So I stopped and I stared, and she was just holding her child over this trash can instead of a toilet. And it struck me because there's a restroom. No one stopped her. Nobody stopped her. We all just we walked by. We, we watched. Security walked by. They watched. Nobody said anything. I don't think anybody dared to because it was so out of pocket. Nothing happened. No, there were no consequences. <laughs> they just moved on. <laughs> I remember coming here as a little kid, like 10 years ago, and it was a lot busier. My dad actually works for a boat store. They rented out a spot in the Bangor Mall and they kind of like filled the entire store with boats. He used to bring me there on his work days and we just like hang out and fuck around in the boats and stuff. I like grew up Christian and like in the in the church scene and I was dating this like pastor's daughter. I wasn't allowed to like date on like his terms he's like not nah, like Jess, bad dude. <laughs> I was a normal person. But like that girl and I still like dated on the low. And we used to meet up at the mall. She would like tell her parents she's running the mall, and I would tell my parents I was running the mall. And this one time, we were at Macy's, and we got in the elevator, and we like, you know. Then somebody like pressed the door open by me. It was like an associate of Macy's who was just like pooped. But she like she got what's going on. She know she didn't care, but was just like, all right. That's it. <laughs> oh, is Macy's closed now? Macy's is gone. I want to be completely honest with you guys. I've never been that into shopping. I think an argument can be made that the most important thing happening inside this mall isn't buying or selling. We all know what the mall's real value is. You can't put a price on community. G-Force really embodies the spirit of the mall, a place of gathering, a place where you can sing, where you can dance. You don't know how good you've got it until it's gone. And I can't believe that I would ever say this, but today, G-Force is all we have. 
And what would the Bangor Mall in the 2020s be without Bangor Comic and Toy Con, whose wonderful events, bazaars, and meet and greets have ushered in a fresh batch of mall memories for a new generation? You know, they all said the mall was dying, and yet I spent a lot of time here over the last few months. I've made a lot of friends at the mall, only spending money on a drink at GeForce here and there. Throughout this journey, I've acquired some fond mall memories of my own. I can assure you from the inside that the Bangor Mall is very much alive. In the Queen City today, the Christmas Craft Fair has returned. Dear viewer, I hope you have enjoyed this omelet I have prepared for you today. Of course, my intentions are pure, but like every omelet, I had to break a couple of eggs to make it. I leave you this information because, although I do not wish to do so, there is always a chance one will upset they who control the eggs. I know there are many feelings about the Bangor Mall, but I wish to continue a respectful sentiment into the comment section. If you wouldn't mind leaving a mall memory in the comments, I would really enjoy hearing about it. If you've made it this far into the video, I can't tell you how much that means to me, and I really appreciate you watching. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. to say what the future holds for Bangor Mall. Will times be too tough for it to hold out? Will a new era be embraced? Should we hold on to the past or let it die out? It was always more than a shopping center, more than they ever intended it to be. It was a place to go when there was nowhere else, a place where we can see each other and all hang out. Yeah, ho where are all my escalator heads at? Shout out to the Escalation Mafia, aka the Lift Lovers. I am here at the Bangor Mall at what once was the only escalator in Bangor, Maine, now entombed in a sarcophagus of drywall and throw pillows. Yeah, I'm, I really wish I had some pictures for you guys today, uh, but we're just going to have to imagine it sitting there in darkness. <laughs>